Good evening and welcome to Cliffy Land's live global cooking challenge as we continue our 193 week round the world alphabetical learn to cook challenge. Tonight is night one of nation number 190, uh, actually 192 as a matter of fact I got that wrong on the text there. Nation number 192 is Zambia. We're cooking the food of Zambia. Tonight we're making Nishima and Nadiwo of mushrooms and dried fish as well as um, uh, chamundonga which is a uh, wild spinach although maybe not quite so wild we are simulcasting on meerkat and periscope uh, hello uh, thank you uh, Mar for the like and the restream hello uh, in case you're wondering where Zambia is Zambia is located in southeast Africa it's kind of hard to see. It's all crowded in there. It's a rather large country, about the size of France. Uh, we're going to go to the globe here. Ah, okay. So for you uh, meerkatters first, let's get our globe turned around. Uh, sorry, I'll, get, I'll give the Periscope people a better look in a second. But Zambia, located right there. Lusaka being the capital. And for you Periscopers, uh, a little better view. Uh, Africa right there is where we are cooking the food of Zambia so uh, we have uh, our dried fish that we've been cooking for uh, an hour now we soaked it for 45 minutes and hello there that's my big head uh, we are on uh, simulcasting on meerkat and periscope and uh, we'll give the periscope people a bird's eye view in just a moment what happened here okay one more time with you get the lens right okay there we go so I'm going to show you what's happening over on the stove as we move over here, uh, get some space for the uh, uh, meerkatters, and we will move our periscope over to the bird's eye view. Hey there, you're going to go up in the sky, so hold on tight. Don't get too nauseous. You'll only be in this spot for just about a minute. There, okay, so we got our fish. Uh, our salted fish, which was a pollock. I know it's not local by any stretch of the imagination, but salted fish is uh, imported from all over to countries all over the world. And uh, so we soaked that for 45 minutes and then we boiled it for uh, almost an hour. And we're going to drain it, uh, but we're going to use that water. So that's why I pulled it out with the tongs. And now we're going to chop this into bite sized portions here. Uh, shredding it with two forks and once we've done that we're going to put that back in the water hello good evening Derek hey I don't know if you saw there's 193 countries yes there are 193 UN member states this is 192 instead of 191 as I put in the text tag that was my mistake uh, so I'm gonna make sure my hands are not oily so we can move everyone back Hopefully, we're not going to lose it. There are 193 United Nations member states. Um, there are, uh, depending who you talk to, there's more. Thank you so much. I appreciate that comment. Um, there are another several countries that are not United Nations member states, and we're going to be covering those after we hit Zimbabwe next week. Um, uh, and we'll also be covering uh, my people of Puerto Rico uh, somewhere in that process. And then uh, we will launch phase two of the challenge uh, in the fall, where we'll start uh, alphabetically again from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, uh, doing one night a week uh, for each country, and then potentially one, how are we doing this, once a week or daily? Uh, right now we're doing it anywhere from one to three nights a week uh, for these next two weeks, um, this week and next week. And then we, uh, like I said, we do the bonus countries, the four, five, uh, six, seven bonus countries, and then we start again with Afghanistan. And then uh, from there we go back uh, around the world. We're also going to be doing the 50 states on the occasional second night and the cuisine of a particular country or region selected at random with the help of the viewership uh, on any given third night. So that is what is happening. Uh, joint specialist, hey, thanks for the like and the restream. So we've got our water right here. And we're going to add our fish back into the water. And I need to take a picture. The pictures are for the blog. The blog, thank you for the follow. Uh, the blog is located at cliffyland.com. 
That's cliffyland.com. Uh, hey, Derek, I see you on both sides, cliffyland.com. You can uh, follow, like on Facebook, follow on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There you will find information about all the previous countries that we did. Hey, thanks for the hearts. All the information about those, as well as um, uh, videos, links to the countries, information about the recipes, all that good stuff. What are we making? We're making the Shima, which is a Zambian cornmeal cake, which is eaten with everything. Uh, we're making a uh, Nidiwu, which is um, a relish, the, basically any side that goes with that cornmeal. Uh, in this case, a mushrooms with dried fish. And we're also serving a, a relish of uh, chamundonga, which is a wild spinach, although not so well. You should have to link up to your blog and scope. Ah! Um, I should do that. Uh, do you travel there? No, we do not travel there. Uh, that would be nice, but you know. We, we travel by stove here. So, what we're doing is we have our dried fish that's in the water. We're gonna add, uh, this is about two cups of sliced mushrooms. Uh, there would be uh, specific mushrooms there, but here uh, just have the plain white mushrooms. They're not very specific on some of these recipes. Uh, so we are going to cook this for about 10 minutes over medium heat on here. Uh, these are the mushrooms. I don't know how well you can see over there. Try not to have you fall into the into the pot. Who doggies? Okay. So uh, we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be doing the cornmeal at the very end and the spinach somewhere uh, in between. So there's gonna be ten minutes on here for the uh, for the the fish and the mushrooms. The uh, mushrooms will release some water. We're having this on kind of a medium heat right now. Uh, it said about two cups of water. So again, the it was a dried fish. The dried fish just happened to be uh, it's salted fish. Uh, which is, you know, that's how it's preserved, so it can travel long distances and be kept for ages. Uh, and it's popular, you know, just uh, any number of countries, from the Caribbean to you, you name it, to Africa, to anywhere in Oceania. And uh, the fish will travel from distant regions. I love mushrooms, yes. Uh, mushrooms, uh, generally there, one of the issues I have with finding things for uh, Africa isn't so much the protein, uh, which sometimes can be odd, you know, like antelope and bushmeat and stuff like that. Uh, and they eat a number of, you know, odd things uh, in, in the reaches of Zambia, from mice to crickets to you name it. And their recipe is for all of the above. Uh, we're not doing that, of course. But usually what's most difficult is the, uh, the greens, the specific wild greens uh, that uh, you just cannot find here. So, uh, unfortunately, we always have to resort to spinach or kale or collard greens. And I wanted to do collard greens this time, but wouldn't you know what? The two places I went to did not have collard greens, which was annoying. Collard greens uh, have the very unusual name in Zambia as being called rape leaves, um, which is odd, but hey, try Liberian food. Yes, we did that already. Check that out at cliffylanda.com. We made a great chicken jollof for Liberia, uh, and we did that uh, before the days of live streaming, So, but you will find the pictures and everything from it. Very, very good. Very delicious food. Love West African food. Uh, our last two countries have here, of course, are not West African. They are uh, from South Eastern Africa, South Central Africa, uh, Great Lakes region. Hello, greetings, how are you doing? Um, and is that Babs? I know I got a follow from Babs earlier today, and I was hoping things were doing groovy over there. We are uh, boiling down these mushrooms for a few minutes. Yes, it is. How are things in the sea bus? I was just there. Uh, not. To, are you a chef? No, I've, I've learned to cook. But yes, I'm happy I've, you found me too. And I have only two countries so far on this new run. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We have only two more countries left on this one. This is correct. Um, I'm not a chef. No, I'm not a chef. The idea was here. I never learned to cook. And uh, as a child, and uh, many, many, many years ago, uh, I did something bad. I tried to cook for myself, and I almost died. I, uh, I almost poisoned myself. It was a bad thing. It was a long story. I'll be making a video of it and posting that on YouTube at some point. Uh, however, uh, after a long situation, 
somebody finally told me to get off my butt and learn to cook, just go on YouTube, find a video, uh, learn to roast a chicken. I did. I was reading a book about a woman in Afghanistan, and uh, she was talking about the stew that she really loved, was her favorite thing in the world. And I said, you know, I should do that. I should make this stew. Um, so I found a recipe. I made it. It came out really well. And then someone said, hey, you should blog this. So after about the second week, uh, I said, hey, you know what? I can do a different country in alphabetical order, one country a week. Thank you for liking the restream, Derek. And I will learn to cook in the process. And uh, then, uh, so I did Afghanistan and Albania. Hey, thank you, Henke. And um, so I did a country a week. And I started blogging, but I didn't know how to boil water. I couldn't chop an onion. And now I'm live streaming. So about a year and change ago, <laughs> Dad got the follow button again. Um, about a year and change ago, uh, I started live streaming on uh, Periscope uh, for one week and then Meerkat the rest of the time. And over the last couple months, I've been back on Periscope and Meerkat. Uh, after we hit Zimbabwe next week, though, that will be our last country on Meerkat. Then we'll be switching to Busker for um, this side of it. Periscope will remain. And uh, then uh, we'll be on Busker and Periscope simultaneously. And instead of blogging uh, the long form, we will be making short form videos where you'll be able to see just in about four minutes everything that happened on any given night. And that's what we're going to be doing. So I've been busy editing my video today for my little introductory thing, which will be on YouTube uh, probably in the next week or two. And that will be the kind of, hey there, if you don't know me, get to know me! Get to know me! So that's the deal. So, yes, we've done, uh, it's almost four years, and September will be exactly four years. But uh, after Zimbabwe, like I said, we're going to do Puerto Rico, since it's not a United... I love you on Periscope. Has anyone told you that you speak with a similar manner as Ellen DeGeneres? Um, that's, I, that's nice. I mean, I, I have a similar manic style, I suppose. Uh, also, I kind of keep talking in a manic kind of way, because uh, I need to keep talking over the music. Because when I um, post it on YouTube... If there's more than a few seconds of the music, it activates the copyright infringement stuff. So, but thank you. I think that is a compliment. So, whew, okay, a few more minutes to go on this. Uh, my hands are, what are you making? This is the, specifically, the mushrooms and dried fish, which is a ndiwo, uh, which is a relish. When the foods of Zambia, uh, everything always has... You can eat whatever you want. However, it is said that you, if you have not eaten the nishima, which is the cornmeal cake, which we'll be making towards the end of this, uh, then it is not said that you have that you have eaten it all. So um, that uh, hence uh, the relish is always on the side. So you have you have you can't just have one. You can't just have the other. You have to have both. Otherwise, people think you're nuts. Uh, you're not going to get sued. No, it's not getting sued, but I do get a little ding saying, hey, you're going to have to, you can't put any ads on your YouTube video because it's someone else's music. So that's the deal on that. Here we go. So now we're going to add to the, this, we're going to add our two teaspoons of peanut oil that we had spilled earlier. And then we're going to add salt to taste here. And there uh, was salt in the fish, so that means that Cliffy has to taste it. That's one thing that I always forget to do, which is always a problem. So give me a second here to make sure I don't burn my mouth at the same time. So let's see how much it is, because I, so I soaked the fish for 45 minutes, and uh, then I boiled it for an hour or so. So let's see how salty it remains. Because it was a salted fish. Thank you for the like, Mom. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Good, yummy, salty. Good. Um, so now to this, we are going to add green pepper, one green bell pepper, chopped. And then we're going to add our um, two medium cloves of garlic. which I need to spoon out of here. And then we're gonna add our two diced tomatoes, which we uh, cored and seeded earlier. 
And uh, then we're going to add our one chopped onion. And we're going to let that simmer for about 30 minutes. Do I need to cover it? No, I don't. Okay. So that's this one. So I'm going to put this over on the back burner so you all can see what's happening over here. Yeah. So while that continues to cook, we're going to move on to our spinach. Now with our spinach, thank you for the like, uh, David. <laughs> Yay, smile. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to start with our spinach. Now this is unusual because uh, this normally uh, calls for, uh, I would imagine, putting oil in first. However, in this case, it's suggested instead of adding oil to add actual peanuts. So we have ground one half cup of actual peanuts, uh, roasted, unsalted peanuts. And this is going to serve as our oil. You're coming Zambian food. We're cooking Zambian food. Yes, we are. So uh, this is going to cook in here. Cooking, yes, cooking, indeed. So we're going to try to melt this uh, down as oil, or to a degree, the peanuts. This is a little too hot on the front. And turn that down in the back to a simmer. Okay. So we have our uh, uh, greetings. I wish I could understand that. Um, hmm? oh, behind me, yes. Okay, so now we're heating up our peanuts, or you could use peanut oil. Is that rocky? No, no, rocky is uh, only when it goes in the oven. Um, hello. And so now we're going to add to this uh, our, and I, I've done this in a different order than in the recipe because it didn't seem to make sense otherwise. We're adding in our onions here and our tomatoes. This is one tomato and one onion. And to that, uh, this is a little too hot. Did you mince the garlic? Uh, this is just chopped. That was just chopped garlic over there. So to this, we're gonna add the spinach. This is a, a bag of triple washed spinach. Now again, uh, this uh, uh, this recipe is just kind of random. It's uh, it says wild spinach. This is uh, spinach triple wash. It's not wild Spanish, but you can't find that. Seems like it's going to be very delicious. I hope so. Uh, it always is. Well, thank you for that. Um, ah. So we're going to wilt the spinach down. Uh, again, there would be a million different grains uh, that would be cooked in with this. Uh, hello. No, thank you. Mmm. Okay. And um, so we're wilting down the spinach. I'm hoping this isn't too hot. Now, there is a legend that I read, and I'm going to try to relay it as best as I can. Uh, it uh, has to do with the food. Your husband is so supportive. Thank you. Zambia, yes, Zambia. Asilubi Korba. I do not know the Korbasi. I do not speak the language. I wish I did. Um, okay, so the legend, uh, as I understand it, is that everything is supposed to be served with this cornmeal, Zambian. Oh, that, that's, that's the dish. Is that, is that, is that the language that I'm missing there? Um, I thought they have like 40 different native languages. Nonetheless, um, the, uh, you're supposed to have the cornmeal, it had to do with the food in Zambia. What did you cook when you did Cuba? Uh, I, I felt very embarrassed because I'm Puerto Rican and I grew up with Cuban food and I really wanted to do it well. However, that was early in the alphabet and I did not know certain food basics, which was really a pain. So I embarrassed myself, I must say. Lots of Turks on Periscope. Ah, I see. Thank you. Yes. Also on Meerkat as well. Um, however, uh, Cuba, I did, uh, I tried to do a roast pork, which... It came out okay, it just not, I did not work quickly enough, and, or slowly enough. And uh, I destroyed the Cuban bread, but I did the good mojo, and I did the, uh, uh, um, um, arroz con frijol. So, uh, but I live in London. Ah, okay. So now that we've, uh, this is wilted down, 
Uh, we're gonna salt this to taste one more time on this. Uh, where are you now? I am in South Florida. Cuban food is amazing. Yes, I grew up with it. And we, again, we are South Florida. That would explain the Cuban food. Um, but I grew up on Cuban food and I'm Puerto Rican. So it's uh, their sort of sister countries, as it were. Um, but I grew up with both and uh, I love it. But we're in South Florida, about two hours north of Miami, about uh, an hour north of Fort Lauderdale, about half an hour north of West Palm Beach. Uh, our area here is known for a famous lighthouse. Uh, some Florida history and various celebrities. There's a spot in Brooklyn, Sophie's. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Okay, here we go. We're tasting. Mm. Mm. Okay. A decent amount of salt. I need to turn this down. I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to cover this. Now we're going to let that cook. It, it really don't know why it needs to cook for as long as that. So I'm going to turn it way down. And we're going to get moving on... Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn it down so much that I'm going to change burners. Because I don't want it to overcook. So here is the most important part, uh, which is the uh, cornmeal, the nishima. Now I'm doing half of the recipe on this. So... Uh, there is only two ingredients here. White cornmeal, switch pans, and go. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, well, I think that's going to be okay, because I have that on low over here, I'm hoping. Uh, it's very posh for Cliff. Well, it can be, although they're not necessarily. It is a very varied community. Very, very varied. Uh, there, are, there are very, very fancy people and very, very not fancy people. In a singing voice. Ah, okay. So, okay, this is white cornmeal. You can't really see it because it's very... The white balance on the lens works this way, but... It's like that. And uh, this is normally we'd have with uh, Colombian food, Venezuelan food, arepas. That's why um, pupusas I've made with that. Have you ever considered doing a dish for all 50 states, please? Yes, we are. We did. We cooked the United States. And uh, we also um, are going to be... Uh, doing the 50 states individually is part two of the challenge. Do you have to eat it with your hands? Normally you would. The premise is you grab it with the hands from the center of the dish, make sort of a spoon with it, and then you eat the other relishes, in this case, these two dishes, with it. Um, so that's the way traditionally it's eaten, and I'm sure it tastes better that way. Uh, and that's not the way we specifically eat in this household, but that's a me thing, not a you thing. So here we go. Uh, we are going to add two cups of water to... This yes, without spilling it all over creation. Do you know the origin of the word posh? No, I, though I'm guessing it's not one of the Spice Girls. Uh, dee -dee -dee. Ow, 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 ow. It's, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very British, though, I, I gather. Ah, okay, so. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Okay, so we're going to bring this two cups of water to the point that it's lukewarm, allegedly, which it kind of is already right there. Oh, so it says about three to four minutes, which strikes me as odd for it to get lukewarm. Um, and greetings to, to the Turks. Fish and okra. Yes, uh, we're doing a uh, chicken and okra on Tuesday. Uh, so check that out. We have the fish part with the dried fish back here. I wish I had an instant translator on there. Okay, so... That seems kind of warm. It says lukewarm. I don't know about three to four minutes till lukewarm means, but here goes. Uh, using a spoon. Cool, amazing. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that first comment. You may want to shoot that again. Um, we are going to start adding a tablespoon at a time. I need to make sure I got pictures of everything here. Uh-huh, and you. Okay, and... Uh, we're going to be adding a tablespoon at a time, this cornmeal, to the point that we get about uh, about a third of a cup in, because I'm doing half of the recipe. So it's going to be sprinkled in at a time. That's one. Slowly. Uh, the texture on this is very, very important. 
um, and that's what go and people are very exacting about it and it's probably going to be you know not not quite right but um, I've done similar type things this uh, particular dish is uh, go show my mom tomorrow great um, this particular dish can be done in a num um, in number of ways badly uh, it has a number of different names and a number of different countries throughout all of Africa uh, Pap and from West Africa in Kenya identify with the manic pace you're cooking. I find the stress paradoxically therapeutic. Ah, thank you. Um, wealthy British people are in the Africa's wood cabins under the port side out starboard home port, our starboard home posh. Thank you, the Africans. Into port out starboard home. Ha! Huh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So, I don't know if I'm in on the joke in the Turkish here, but hey, knock yourselves out. Anywho, um, so we're going one tablespoon at a time until it's smooth and thick. So we're sprinkling in until smooth and thick. Uh, incidentally, we did a uh, Turkish, uh, we did three nights of turkey on the blog. And uh, you can see that at cliffyland.com. It was one of the best ever, and the uh, Ottomans had so much influence throughout uh, so many great parts of the world that uh, we kind of covered Turkish food basically in a whole bunch of different places, in a manner of speaking. Now, the idea about the texture on this is it should be too smooth, not too smooth, not too dry, not too lumpy, um, which is uh, something of a challenge. And uh, so we want to get it smooth, and once it's smooth, uh, we're going to keep bringing it in until it is smooth and thick, and then we're going to bring, yeah, put the rest in. What did you cook for grease? Uh, grease we did before Meerkat, before Periscope, before live streaming, but that was actually a very, very good dish. I did a, yay, Turkish! Uh, we did a uh, moussaka, which took all day. It was exceedingly complicated, but it was super, super, super delicious. Um, I did, um, what do you call the, uh, oh god, um, my brain is blanking on it. Uh, hola, como esta? Estamos muy bien, así, cocinando la comida de Zambia en África, en Sud de África. Este, um, maíz. Uh, but anyway, um, it was, a uh, not dolma, uh, I did that for something else. I did three different dishes. Uh, but the grease was really great. It was very complicated, and I tried to do as much as I possibly could uh, because uh, it was early in the alphabet, but one of the best that I did early in the alphabet. Have you had capenta? I am not sure if I have or not. Uh, perhaps is all I can say right now. I am making a mess of things, aren't I? Did you do something for Montenegro? Yes, I did. Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I did do Montenegro. That was uh, uh, quickly soon before I did uh, the live streaming. But I did do Montenegro. Um, I wish I could remember what I did. Uh, this is a mess, but I can't get rid of it right now because the burners are all on. Ah. Okay, ah, stirring, stirring, stirring. I'm supposed to be stirring here. Okay, stirring. So smooth and thick. And now adding a little bit more. And then we're going to have to keep going until it comes to a boil. And... Yep. Three to four minutes. And then turn the heat down. Thank you so much for the hearts. ¿Cómo está usted? ¿Cómo está la cosa contigo, Carlos? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde estás? So this is a, sort of like a gruel, like a porridge. It's supposed to be not too dry, not too stiff, not too thick. Uh, if it's at all like the ones I did for Kenya and such, the idea is um, you know it's done when you can uh, put the stick in and it stays vertical in it. But this particular recipe did not say anything about that. So, you're going to keep up. So it's officially bubbling. It's officially bubbling, so let me get this all in here and uh, cover and let simmer for three to four minutes. So I'm gonna turn that down even more. And three to four minutes. So covering 
here, three to four minutes. That's gonna give me a chance to wipe this all down. Uh, I'm gonna give this a stir back over here, see how that's doing. The relish just seems to be doing well. Uh, it's evaporating some, which is good. Uh, so these things are called, generally called a relish. They can be vegetarian, they can have meat. Uh, most of the rest of they can have beans, pulses, a variety of different uh, local greens. In our case, uh, we just did spinach. All the dishes go on the blog. Yes, yes, indeed they do. Go Turkey. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, trying to do every country on earth. Like I said, once we hit Zimbabwe next week, after that, uh, I am hoping to do uh, the big Puerto Rican week, which will be the big celebration of having done all 193 countries by doing my, you know, my homeland, as it were, out. And uh, then... Uh, we will be doing the bonus countries, uh, which will include um, Kosovo, Palestine, Vatican City, and Taiwan, possibly Western Sahara, um, maybe more, but we'll be taking some time off somewhere along the way. Uh, CHP forever? Okay. And, um, and then we'll begin again with Afghanistan. So, you'll get, uh, so the idea with Phase 2 will be live streaming. Uh, for the first time, for everything until Pakistan, and uh, and for the second time, we'll be uh, checking out the things that we did previously, see how I can improve on them, what I learned, or if they were just not good, do something different, and then uh, we will be doing the 50 states on any given second night. So this here would be qualify as a second night because our one official night is on Tuesdays. We do the official thing on Tuesdays. Sometimes you do Fridays, sometimes you do Sundays, so that's how it would work. We would uh, sometimes do the 50 states and sometimes do a cuisine at random, and I'd be looking for people's advice uh, on some uh, very, very specific cuisine. So we'd be looking for food from, you know, say, Southern... How are things pretty your new provider for Android? I, be, I You know, I haven't seen that they're necessarily ready. Um, but then I don't watch their, they have an, uh, a thing uh, on their feed saying how, they, uh, how they're updating every week. They have an update every week. So I think they were shooting for July. We're in July now. So uh, good thing you're on Periscope. Uh, but there is an Android version of the Busker app, which will be on uh, for, fa uh, for Phase 2. Uh, and that version is available uh, now. You can um, find out about them on their website. Just uh, look. I think it's busker.co. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that last comment. Uh, busker.co. Uh, I believe that's their website. And there's a frequently asked questions thing. And uh, I think they have how to apply for the uh, Android beta there. So uh, the way this is normally cooked, uh, this people will... Sometimes it's so big, they'll have one person hold the pot and another person will stir. Uh, before you came eating turkey? Uh, yes, yes, I ate turkey. You can find that uh, at clickyland.com on the blog and you will see the three different nights we did for turkey. And I believe there was, uh, there was live streaming for those, so I did post the videos. Uh, also, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Just search for Cliffy Land. Go to YouTube, search and subscribe. That would be really great if you did. So this is one cup of the white cornmeal, and it's supposed to be, it can be a little drier or a little wetter, depending on how a person likes it, but the texture is very important, and the heat is very important. There's many traditions around this particular thing, and this we're going to be doing this for Tuesday's dish also, this uh, Nishima, and the print, oh, the light came back on. Uh, the premise is that if it's hot, it's good, but uh, and the the you know oldest man eats first and put his finger in it, and if he if it's so hot that he can't put his finger all the way in, it's good, and if he can, it's too cold, and that should only go to children and dogs, and it should never be eaten the next day. It should only be made fresh, unless you're a child or an animal, and uh, and it seems to be getting to that consistency where it's a little sticky. So I think we're almost there. And I'm going to say we are there. So I think we're going to be at dinner time right about now. Because apparently it's very key to get everything to the table and eaten right away. 
So I'm gonna give this a quick taste here. See what it's like. Yeah, uh-uh. Mm, good. You know what? I'm gonna add some salt. Just because I think it needs it. Uh, one thing Zambian food is not known for being spicy or having spices, you know, to speak of. All I ever saw was salt that came in here. Did you put the lid on it for a minute? Yes, I did. I did put the lid on it uh, for about three to four minutes earlier. And now we are ready. So I'm going to take this off the heat. And everybody goes off. And we're going to start serving. Which means that we need to move over to the plating station. So let me get the plates out first. So I don't knock everyone sideways from the bird's eye view. Uh, I did not know I'm using English translation. Oh! Okay. Well, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. That way I can see what you're writing. So we're going to move over here now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know what happened is that I got oil on the handle and the thing that I'm touching is oily. Which is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Plates here. Okay. Everybody ready? You, you over here. Okie doke. So time to plate. There isn't a whole lot of fancy in the plating. Which is okay, because I'm not particularly good at that either. So, uh, what did I do? Here we go. Scoop. Okay. Uh, busker.ee.com. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's busker.co. Uh, but uh, Google for busker app. Um, and uh, that's how... Uh, I found it uh, on the web. B U S K E R, busker. Um, uh, there are a couple things that have the same or similar names, which obviously is confusing. Uh, but once I was introduced to it, it's fine. One of the reasons we're switching to that is uh, well, one reason is that uh, the population on, on Meerkat is sort of gotten quite small. And also, they don't uh, upgrade it, so they haven't fixed things like the scheduling, which is a problem. And also, on the uh, busker, a person can tip. And it would be nice to get uh, some financial remuneration for this project, because some things get to be a little bit... I get a ball of water, so I won't stick to the spoon. Oh, good point. Well, it's there now, but I will remember that for next time. So, now we're going to add the relish to it and but thank you for that tip and back okay here we go with the greens not a whole lot there which is good fewer leftovers okay you go here now when I, when I see these um, sometimes they're like on separated but uh, a lot of the different Zambian dishes look like plates of, of just gop, um, for lack of a better word. Very, very tasty, but not uh, what you'd call fancy in the presentation. Uh, yay, thank you. And now for the mushrooms and uh, dried fish, which the dried fish is sort of um, kind of come apart into the the main dish here and I'm gonna try not to burn my hands too. In fact I'm gonna go clean that spoon just for a moment. Be right back. I'm kinda of run low on spoons. Ah yay yay okay. Now we're gonna grab the last of, the, it's over here. Okay, so this is our mushrooms and dried fish. Just gonna go right there. This, there will be leftovers. You're making me hungry, thank you. That's what we try to do here. And trying to get as little as possible of the, uh, of the liquid there, since the, the nature of the plates here. Now the mushrooms obviously release a good deal of water, but here we go, pictures for the blog in three, two, one. 
one. Get a quick wipe here. And uh, this is the one that's going to be the photogenic one. This way. Okay. And uh, is that mashed? No, it's uh, the Nishima. It is a white cornmeal, which has to be a very specific heat and texture uh, Nishima. Uh, I'm not going to stick my finger in it, but traditionally it would be eaten with a hand. The oldest male eats first. Uh, yes, you can follow. What football teams from Turkey? I do not know. I do not follow that. Uh, yes, Instagram. Just follow uh, on any social media of your choosing. We are at cliffyland.com or search for Cliffyland on Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, YouTube, please subscribe. This is food from Re uh, Z Zambia, sorry, Zambia in Southern Africa. So this is the dish. This is in the dish in the Shima, which is the cornmeal cake, uh, the white cornmeal cake. Uh, Meerkat notification also stopped. I phone do because of Periscope alert. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay, so again, this is the Nashima, uh, which is the white cornmeal cake. The mushrooms with the dried uh, fish is the Nadiwo, which is the relish. The other Nadiwo, the other relish, is uh, the Chamundonga which is uh, not really wild spinach, but spinach nonetheless. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us. Tune in Tuesday, 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 for the second and final night of Zambia. We'll be making this part again, but we'll be making a new dish with chicken and peanuts and okra, and that is what is going to happen. So again, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like, follow, everything. Thank you very much. See you next time. Until then, ta-ta.